Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word that we are going to briefly look at just to encourage ourselves. And I'm so excited about the topic you've given unto us because it's indicative of the plan that you have for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bring clarity to your word. Let these words come with power. Let them come with life. Let them mingle with faith in our hearts and let it transform our lives in Jesus name. Let these words birth changes so desperately needed in our lives. In Jesus mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. And the the word God has given me for tonight is hope in a hopeless situation hope in a hopeless situation oftentimes we find ourselves in hopeless situations how do you get hope in a hopeless situation it seems like an impossible mission isn't it where are you going to find hope in a hopeless situation but guess what when we are dealing with god it is definitely possible to have hope to you know to gain hope even in the midst of a hopeless situation. And I prophesy over everyone under the sound of my voice, over that hopeless situation. And I use the word that seeming hopeless situation. God will birth hope in it and it will bring a turnaround to that circumstance, to that situation in Jesus' mighty name. You know, look at those testimonies we heard already. You know, about someone not being able to move at all. Or getting to a point where she can now move and jump around. Now that is hope coming out of something that was seemingly hopeless. And God will touch all our lives. So maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's ministry. Maybe it's your marketplace where you're working, your business. Maybe it's your marriage. You know, whatever it is that is, you know, in court, hopeless right now. God will bring hope into that situation and say a massive believing amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to read a text tonight, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, so the word expected expectation is what i would like for us to focus on tonight you know another version i think new living translation says to give you a hope and a future expected end means a hope and a future what are you expecting hope is to do with what we are expecting what we are expecting so i looked in the dictionary to actually find out what the dictionary definition of hope it says a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen so a feeling of expectation and a desire for a particular thing to happen you know so in the in within the context of the bible that will be confident expectation of what god has promised confident expectation of what god has promised So God has promised, for instance, that will be heard and not tell. When I have confident expectation of that, then I have hope in what God has said. So that's what hope is, you know. And the the strength of my hope lies in God's faithfulness. Because God is faithful. Because I know God will never default on his promises. Because I know God cannot lie. You know, the Bible says God cannot lie. It is not possible. The ingredient, you know, the capacity to lie does not exist within within God. So if God has said it, he would do it. He's a faithful, faithful God. So the strength of my hope lies in the fact that God is a faithful God. And I want to assure everyone listening to me. Let the strength of your hope lie in God's faithfulness. Has God ever shown himself unfaithful in your life? Has God ever turned his back on you? Has God ever abandoned you? Has God ever rejected you? Has God ever refused to help? No, 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 no. God has always been on spot because he's a faithful father. So hope believes that everything will work. That's what hope does. Hope believes Everything will work. Even when things are looking otherwise, hope believes it will be all right. It will end well. 
it will end in praise. That is hope. Hope helps you to stay calm and peaceful even when something undesirable is happening. You just have a quiet disposition. You're just peaceful. You're just calm. And it's as if you've got this inner assurance that everything will work well. Even though you can see around you that things look like they're going south. But guess what? Because you have hope and you have an expectation. You know, the Bible says the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short. I prophesy over your life. Your expectation will not be cut short in Jesus' name. But let me just put a little warning on that one. Make sure your expectation is positive. Yeah? Make sure your expectation is positive. Don't be like Job. The thing that he thought it was going to happen, happened. Don't be like him. The thing that he thought was going to happen, happened. You know? So, it's important for us as um as Christians to have positive expectation and God will help us in Jesus mighty name to have positive expectation in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah so hope helps you to stay calm it helps you to stay peaceful hope believes you will get through you will get through you will make it that is hope that is hope so a person is said to be hopeless when they have no expectation so when the person is has no expectation they are said to be hopeless i pray that none of us will ever be hopeless in the mighty name of jesus so we're going to look at some examples in the bible of some people who pass through hopeless situations you know, and the good thing, you know, the good thing about whenever, when you come up with examples in the Bible, these are people that have one head, that have two eyes, you know, that have one heart, you know, one lung, yeah? So, you know, in other words, they are your regular people. They are not angels. So, if they could go through this journey and come out of what would seemingly have been a hopeless situation, then there's hope for us. That the same God that did it for them will do it for us, can do it for us. It will happen for us in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say a believing amen. Amen. So our first example, we're going to very quickly look at Abraham. Romans 4, 17 to 19. Abraham, Romans 4, 17 to 19. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Hope against hope. Wow. Abraham had hope even when the reality on ground suggested a hopeless situation. Now, God gave me a picture. If a young couple go to see the gynecologist, for instance, and the gynecologist does all the tests, and he says, oh, you, you are fine. You know, your count is fine. Your eggs are fine. Your ovaries are fine. Your fallopia tube is fine. In fact, everything is fine. You guys just go home. Give it time. The babies will come. Now, it will be easier for that young couple to have hope. Because the gynecologists have told them everything is fine. They look at themselves. Young, sharp guy. Young, sharp woman. There's absolutely nothing stopping them from mass producing babies. But the case of Abraham and Sarah were not like that. They did not need any doctor to tell them that their reproductive organs were dead, not dying, as in the thing has kaput. So to have hope in a situation like that, you're going to need a miracle. If the evidence was in their eyes like this, you know, um, um, Sarah would have been menstruating. Her menstrual cycle would have stopped. 
Mr. Abraham too would have noticed that certain things do no longer take place again. So they didn't need any hospital test. They didn't need any gynecologist to come and tell them that Baba Mama production factory has closed. They themselves could see that the production factory has ended. So to have hope in that kind of a situation, you're going to need, a, you're going, there's going to be a challenge. But guess what the Bible said? Hmm. The Bible said, despite this bleak situation, it says, Abraham did not consider. That is the key word I want you to pick in that sentence. Abraham did not consider. What did he not consider? He did not consider the impossibility of that situation. He did not consider the hopelessness. Do you know what it means when you consider? In other words, you take it into account. If Abraham took into account the deadness of his body or the deadness of the womb of Sarah, they would not have done, you know, the, uh, the, what they did to cause babies to come. They would not have done it. Because he would have been thinking, even this is even ridiculous. Even this is, aren't we even too old for this nonsense like this? Aren't we even too old for this? What is even all this? One? But, ah, well, what is all this? But he did not consider. And I want to say to somebody listening to me, if you want to keep your hope alive, stop considering. So help me preach to your neighbor tonight. Look at your neighbor. Say, stop considering. Stop considering. Stop considering. Ah, my business. Ah, but I only have two customers on my book. You are considering. Eh? Well, God has said, okay, build the house. But I only have 200 pounds in my, in my account. You are still considering. No. Stop considering the, the facts that you can see. Stop considering. Because if you consider the facts, you will not move an inch. It will hold you. The Bible said, Abraham did not consider. He did not consider himself too old or Sarah too old. He did not consider it. Please, if you don't remember many of what I said, remember that word, consider. There are some things we consider in life, but when it comes to hopeless situations, don't consider those things you can see with your physical eyes. Don't consider them. Just do what God has told you to do. Amen? Praise God. Let's look at another example. This woman's name is Hannah. 1 Samuel 1, 10 and 11. And I'm going to read this one in the New Living Translation. In the New Living Translation. Hannah was deep in anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's army, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then will I give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be caught. Hannah was in a dilemma. No babies. No babies. Similar to Sarah and Abraham's situation. Now, why was Hannah's situation hopeless? If it was just Hannah, I believe her husband's name is Elkanah, if it was just the two of them, it would be fine. The wife would say, ah, maybe it's the husband that has a problem. The husband would say, maybe it's the wife. So they will comfort themselves in that fact. But in Hannah's case, it was pretty evident where this fault lies. How do I know that? Her husband had another wife. That one was just mass producing babies. You know, how do I know? 1 Samuel 1, 4. 1 Samuel 1, 4. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, portion. Sons, plural. So that means she had more than one son. Only God knows how many she had. Daughters, more than one daughter. So she had daughters. I don't even know how many. So let's even say for argument's sake, she had at least four children. That was the, the, the genesis of Hannah's problem. Now she cannot say that um, it is something in the atmosphere. Maybe it's the food that we eat. It is evident that the problem was coming from Hannah. You know, and guess what? <clears throat> Listen to this. 
1 Samuel 1, 6 and 7. 6 and 7. The Bible says, Her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, that word fret, to make her miserable, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. So it was not a one-year affair. It was not a two-year affair. Let's even say all Penina had were four children, and every year she was having babies. So let's say give or take five years that Hannah would be was you know petrified, you know made miserable by Penina. That was a hopeless situation. That was very hopeless. But how did Hannah come out of it? Hannah had an encounter with one person who spoke a word into her life. And everything I'm saying, please note it. Somebody who came and spoke a word into that hopeless situation. When you are going through that hopeless situation, you just need one person's voice. Somebody who has faith and belief in God that can come in and speak to that situation. That was all Eli did. He just spoke. And guess what? As he spoke, hope raised up, I mean, rose up within Hannah. Even though she was not pregnant, the Bible says she was no more sad. She started to smile. She started to rejoice. And I want to implore you. I speak life into that hopeless situation in your life. So I want you to break out into a smile and begin to rejoice in God. When you leave this platform, begin to dance. You know, I can, I can just see Hannah saying, I can see everything turning around. Eh? Turning around. Oh, turning around in my favor. The baby hasn't arrived yet. I can see everything turning around. The job is still on the way. Turning around. The husband is coming. Turning around in my favor. The breakthrough is on the way. I can see everything turning around. Eh? Turning around. Oh, turning around in my favor. Eh? You must start to smile. You know, the Bible said she was no more sad. She went to eat. Was she pregnant when she did that? No, 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 no. She just had, maybe like a sermon I'm preaching now. She just had somebody say, look, that hopeless situation is turning around. God will give you that which you have petitioned of him. And I prophesy that into your life too, in Jesus' name. So make sure you break out into a smile and you begin to dance and celebrate. Practice your testimony. What is it going to be like? Eh, when they say, ah, we only give two minutes. Ah, okay. I am going to ask pastor. I want 30 minutes testimony time because my testimony is going to be big. You begin to practice it now. That is how you come out of a hopeless situation. Do what Hannah did. Do what Abraham did. He considered not. And Anna started to break out in praise, in rejoicing. She was no more sad. So please, Take that sad countenance away and begin to smile. Begin to rejoice. People are saying, hey, 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 hey. what happened? Say, don't worry, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's on the way. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just one pronouncement from Eli. One pronouncement. You can read that pronouncement in 17 and 18 of that same chapter 1 of 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more example. Esther. Esther, Esther 4, 15 to 17. These are people that had hopeless situations. If they could come out, there is hope for anybody. Every one of us on this platform, including myself, there is hope. You are coming out in Jesus' mighty name. Esther 4, 15 to 17. I'll read. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night, three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Talk about a suicide mission. This was a suicide mission. The, the situation was so hopeless. The only way 
of escape was this suicide mission that Esther embarked on. The odds were against her. There was only one punishment for going into the presence of the king without an invitation. You all know it. You are Bible scholars. Death penalty. Unless the king lifts her scepter to her. Now, all of us have the benefit of hindsight. We know Esther was favored. The king loved her. But look at this text. When Mordecai came to her and said, Esther, we need your help. What did Esther first say? The king has not called me for 30 days. Was he practicing celibacy in those 30 days? Or did he have some other ladies, other damsels that were satisfying his need? In 30 days, the king had not called Esther. Whether he was now beginning to lose interest in Esther, we don't even know. Even Esther may have been wondering, ah, ah, this is my sweet, sweetheart husband has not called me for 30 days. Who has been there with the king? Who has he been shining his eye on? You know, there's a place, there's a saying in my in my place that when you see the uh, the the new bride, you abandon the old one. Maybe that was the case. Maybe the king was even looking for opportunity to get rid of Esther. She does not know. So it was it was a suicide mission that she was on. But you know what saved Esther? You know what gave her hope? She found like-minded people who could engage in this thing. One of the ways to keep your hope alive, this is another secret. Find people to come on board with you, to pray with you, to fast with you, so that you don't feel like you're going on it alone. It is so encouraging. Just get, you don't need, you don't need one million people. You just need one person that you believe in, that you know, that you know has your, your interest in heart. Say, come, let's go. That is why it is important for you to have your prayer partner. If you don't have your prayer partner, ah, the journey is going to be very, very difficult and lonely. In this journey of coming out of hopelessness, you need somebody else. He said, okay, let's all fast together. I'm sure as she's going in, she's thinking, I know some people are praying for me. They are praying for me. They've got my back. We have an agreement. We have the power of agreement. They are praying to God on my behalf. As I'm praying, they are praying for me. So even in her mind, she's thinking, are you crazy, Esther? Is something wrong with you? But she's thinking, we can't all be crazy. My pastor is praying. My colleagues are praying. My, my uncle is praying. In fact, the whole of the Jews in Shushan are praying. Ah, God is with us. That would have strengthened her hope. But then you cannot do it by yourself. You want to come out of that hopeless situation. You are going to need somebody like-minded that you can walk together and pray together and bash the gates of hell. I do it. I have a few people that I pray together with. We pray together regularly. And so when, the, when the matter is heavy, we pray it heavy. And God counts us heavy. And I know it's because we have used that Thing they call the power of agreement, the prayer of agreement. It's so important. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Romans 8, 24 to 25 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth, why doth he yet hope for? For if we have hope for that which we see not, then we do with patience, wait for it. So hope, we only have hope for stuff you don't see. You don't need to see it, but you have hope. What is hope? What did I say hope was? Expectation. Expectation. Let your expectation be positive and let it be alive. Have expectation. What are you expecting? Have expectation. The reason why some of us are still feeling hopeless is because we don't have any expectation. We are doing it by ourselves. You know, we are doing it by ourselves. We are still considering. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Hmm. Praise God. Hebrews 11.1 1. And I'll read this in the Passion Translation. Hebrews 11. 1. It says, Now faith brings our hope into our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Our faith brings our hope 
into reality. So faith and hope, they are going to work together. Hope, your expectation in the unseen, futuristic. Praise God. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, this is another thing I want to mention. The woman with the issue of blood. When you read Mark 5, 28 to 29, I'll read this very quickly in the TPT translation. And note what this woman did. This is something else I want to give as a secret that we need to do. Let's see what she said. For she kept saying to herself, if only I could touch his clothes, if only I could touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. If only I would touch his clothes, I, will, I know I will be healed. And as soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. How did this woman with the issue of blood come out of that stinking, hopeless situation? Mark 5. 28 to 29. How did she come out? She kept saying to herself, I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be healed. I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be healed. I know my problems are solved. I know my situation is over. She kept saying it. She kept saying it. The Bible says you will have what to say. She kept saying it. She kept saying it. She wasn't just believing it now. She kept saying it. She's saying it. You know, there's a saying that confession is possession. And somebody said a closed mouth is a closed destiny. If a child wants to be fed, what does that child do? They open up the mouth. Mama, I'm hungry. Mama, I will try to begin to cry. But if you're quiet, nothing is going to happen. So what do you want? Begin to say it. Even as I'm talking right now and wrapping this message up, what do you want? Begin to say it. I am blessed and not cursed. I am high and not low. I am head and not tail. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am healed and not sick. I am rich and not poor. What do you want? My business is flourishing. My marriage is flourishing. My home is flourishing. My ministry is flourishing. Jesus is on my side. Jesus is on my side. I am an achiever. I am an achiever. I have accomplished purpose. As I'm talking, begin to prophesy. What do you want? This woman with the issue of blood, she kept saying it. I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made whole. And guess what? Bam! It happened. She was made whole. I want you to bow your heads before him this evening and just begin to tell God. Say, God, bring me out of this hopeless situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, the grace to stop considering, to stop considering how difficult it is, to stop considering all those negative reports the doctor may have given, but to consider your word now to focus on you the grace to stop considering grant me in the name of jesus father lord jehovah god every word that has been spoken to us on this platform even from the praise worship lord jehovah god let each word birth hope in us i said all you just need is a pronouncement even the pronouncements i'm making lord i ask that you will mingle with faith in the hands of your children and will begin to birth hope just like a birth in the life of hannah in the mighty name of jesus lord jehovah Jehovah God, we stand in agreement. Lord Jehovah God, we stand in agreement. I stand in agreement with your children as they are tabling before you their issues and their challenges that are hopeless. I stand in agreement, oh God. The power of agreement tonight, I use it and I declare hope into that hopeless situation in the name of Jesus, whether financial, whether ministerial, whether physical, whether in terms of employment, whether in terms of marriage or family or ministry, whatever Whatever it may be, whether health wise, Lord, I declare hope into that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the hope of the hopeless. That is, take away hopelessness from your children in the name of Jesus. Now you begin to speak, begin to speak. If it is ill health, say, I am healed, I have health. If it is poverty, say, Lord, I am not impoverished, I am too blessed to be cursed, I'm not in bondage, I'm above always, I'm not beneath, I'm head always. I'm I'm not tail. I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through. I am up. I am delivered. I am saved. I am strengthened. I am empowered. I'm enabled. I'm energized. In the name of Jesus, begin to prophesy over your life. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. And I'm going to, in closing, just read one scripture. One scripture. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Take that with you. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation works patience. 
and patience, experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is in us. Hope is the end product of trials and tribulations. And I pray that you will not be ashamed. So lift up your voice and say, Father, I will not be ashamed. 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 Tonight, oh God, I receive that conversion. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for each one of us, oh God, on this platform tonight. I know you are turning things around. You are turning things around. You are taking away hopelessness and you are replacing it with hope tonight. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you. We are already rejoicing and glad for the turning around, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you.